Hello, beautiful ones. How are you? So excited to be at this Q&A with you. Um, God, I just love these topics. You know, Charlotte has people reach out to her with, you know, things that um, she'd love for me to talk about or with people that book calls with me, we'll see common themes and that's that's how we decide on doing our Q&As. And um, gosh, I was just reflecting myself before we really dive in. Um, I was reflecting myself about that settling energy and I was feeling back into what it used to be like for me when I was dating. Hey, beautiful Shelly. Um, when I was like just any issues getting dates. But I just today when I was rocking my baby to sleep, I was like, I've got this Q&A coming up tonight and I was just feeling into it. And I was staring off into the distance, kind of perplexed as I was looking back at my life and I was like, holy shit. Like my standards were so low uh, with what they are now, right? Because obviously I love my life. I've got my soulmate, and my baby. And I create my life on purpose every single day. But that is not where I started. And it wasn't that long ago, right? I've still got my finger on the pulse. I can still remember what it was like to be very frustrated when it comes to relationships and dating and men and all of that stuff. And um, hey, beautiful Audrey. And I was just feeling back into what was it for me? Um, and by the way, with this Q&A, I want to hear what your questions are with this topic. So listen, before I go into where I was at personally, I am just going to, as people are starting to join us, um, share with you, you know, what tonight is about. So um, it's really the message was, are you tired of family and friends telling you that your standards are too high and that to have your soulmate relationship, you are going to have to settle? So let's just start with that. Um, I remember I felt like my mum was trying to set me up with everyone, including the freaking postman. She just wanted me to be off her hands and to be in a relationship. Um, and it was such a, it was, it felt so humiliating. Like all my friends are in relationships and I was like, you know, what's wrong with me? Why am I always the bridesmaid, never the bride? What the fuck is going on? And I just remember back and it breaks my heart a little bit, just tuning into the energy, but my standards, first of all, were not high. Okay. I didn't expect love to work out for me. I didn't expect men to show up for me fully and to prioritize me and to commit to me. Um, I was just happy if, you know, they were like, you know, following up after a date. I was like, cool. Like that's really, really good. Instead of expecting that that is like, hello, I'm Lucy Shah Jahan. Back then I was Lucy Campbell. It's like, hello, do you know who I am? Like you should, of course, should be messaging me back. Like you are so lucky to go on a date with me. That wasn't the energy at all that I used to show up in when I was dating. Um, I had a whole internal story going on that I wasn't good at relationships, that I didn't know how to be myself around men. Um, and honestly, I, looking back now, um, it, honestly, it does feel foreign, but I am taking a moment to really connect back into what it was like. And I just felt like it was the one area that I just had no fucking idea how to navigate. You know, give me job interviews, give me friendships, give me other. But I was like, when it comes to love, I was like, I don't know. <laughs> I really don't know. Your mum would say that too, Shelley. Yeah, and I just felt, um, I really felt on the outer. And here's what I want you to really listen to, because this isn't going to be a long Q&A tonight. I'm a little out of steam, um, needing some extra sleep. But the one thing that I want to share with you right now is, if you ever hear from someone saying to you that your standards are too high, you need to look at who the hell you're listening to, first of all. Who, on, in God's name, first of all, is telling you, hey, Jemsy, that your standards are too high? Then look at their life and is, is their life something that you admire? Is have, you know, or, or are you looking at their relationship going, shit, like that's not the sort of relationship that I want? So first of all, whose voice are you putting above your own right now? Second of all, Stevie Nicks, it's, it's your friend, Stevie. Sorry, I hope my dog's excited, my friend Nat's staying. Stevie, come down, darling. Stevie, come on. <laughs> Stevie has very high standards. Um, second of all, nowhere in your life should you be settling, not just with relationships, but settling is an energy. It is a lack mentality of I'll just be okay with 
a relationship where the guy just at least, you know, returns my calls. Okay. That is major low self-worth. And that was what I was living in for so many years. Okay. So the first thing you want to get here is we can make all the excuses in the world and say, oh, you know, there's just no good men left or my standards are too high. I should just, you know, go really vanilla and really fucking ordinary and just, you know, go out with a guy that at least is nice and good to me. No, like what the fuck is that? You're better off being single and in an amazing relationship with yourself than actually being in any relationship because it's got to feel epic. Otherwise, there is no point in going down the path with someone else that does not light up your soul. It will end in divorce. It will end with you bringing children into the world where you'll have to go to your house one weekend and their house the other weekend. And I ask you, is that what you really want to sign up for? Because that is exactly what is destined for you if you're not being deliberate with, first of all, knowing what it is that you want. What is it that you want in a relationship? How do you want to feel? You have to know what you want and then know exactly what your deal breakers are as well. The other thing is that's really important to know here is that, you know, at the end of the day, the women that come and work with me realize that this is about so much more than just attracting in your soulmate. You have to know yourself. You have to, have to, have to be in a soulmate relationship with the most important woman in your life, which is you. And if you are not valuing yourself every single day and loving yourself, cherishing yourself, speaking to yourself with such reverence and such respect and such love, then you do not have any chance at attracting in a man that is going to show up for you and spoil you and love you and support you if you're not doing that for yourself first. Don't sit there and roll your eyes at me or say, yeah, Lucy, I already know this because you obviously don't. Cerebrally, you might be like, oh, Lucy's not telling me anything new. That's fine. <laughs> My point is, have you got your soulmate in your life yet? Yes or no. And if you don't, then you really want to take in what I'm sharing with you because trust me, I got sick of people giving me advice and telling me this and telling me that. But the bottom line is when someone said to me once, Lucy, you know, we attract in who we are. I have never, ever forgotten that moment. It was one of the biggest moments of my life where it all just, everything like landed on me all at once. And I was like, holy shit, that's profound. Like I was obviously ready to actually hear that and really get the, 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 the enormity of what that actually means. I was like, oh shit. And I looked around at my life and I saw my vision board, my perfect vision board. And I saw my perfect gratitude journal and I was ticking off all the boxes on what I should be doing. But I was so full of shit and I was treating myself like shit and I had no self-worth, no boundaries. I had no standards for myself. And I was like, oh my God, all this work that I'm doing is suddenly fucking redundant. Can you relate to that? Do you feel like you're doing your affirmations, meditating, being a positive person, but you're just like, no matter what I do, I'm not attracting in the caliber of man that I know I really, really want. Is that what you're doing? I know that's what you're doing. And it's confronting. And then what happens is you go, well, maybe that guy that I want doesn't actually exist. And then you slide down that slippery slope down to Mediocreville where you talk yourself out of even wanting to have that dream and then you go putting up with the bare fucking minimum. And I'm here to tell you that this planet has billions of men that are freaking off the charts amazing. And all you want is one. But I guarantee you, you're not believing that this planet has amazing men. Many of you are, uh, have a worldview that you're looking through that is not serving you right now. And that is that men are cheaters, they don't show up for you, love is hard, um, all the good ones are taken, my standards are too high, and I'm telling you right now, you are paddling upstream. And where you need to be is going downstream with the flow. And what the current that's going to take you downstream is going to require is your full on belief that you can have it. And that's where the work is, my friends. That's what this conversation is about is fuck settling, fuck settling in relationships, fuck settling with an average looking bank account, fuck settling in your career, fuck settling if you don't love the weight that you are or the, you know, the way that you're 
um, taking care of yourself, then stop allowing this mediocrity because how we show up one way is, is how we show up in every area of our life. And so if you are feeling like, oh my God, I totally sell it when it comes to love, then I hate to drop the F-bomb, not F-bomb, the truth bomb, <laughs> the F-bomb, I dropped plenty of F-bombs, my women are like, yep, but the truth bomb here is that you're settling with yourself and that's the origin and it's not okay, it should not be okay with you but you can't possibly expect to attract in an extraordinary, amazing relationship if you're not in an extraordinary, lit up, sensational, fucking epic relationship with yourself. It doesn't work. It cannot happen. I don't care how many self-help books you have your head in. I don't care how many times you go off to your therapist. I don't care how many Tony Robbins fucking unleash the power within you go to. I don't care if you are meditating with crystals this big on the beach every single night. <laughs> I don't. Because if we, so many of us get carried away and like, well, I'm doing this and I'm doing that and I'm doing this. And we get caught up in the busyness of what we're doing to try and change our life. But if you could just get still enough for a second and present enough for a second to go, oh, it's all within me. Holy shit. All the wisdom that you need is inside of you right now. That love tank of yours is on empty and it needs to be fucking overflowing with your own love. Isn't that delicious? What I want you to hear here is that it's possible. It is totally fucking possible for you to attract in the love of your life, aka your soulmate, your rock, your person, whatever it is, partner, best friend, whatever it is that you know that you love as a word to describe that. That is your fucking birthright. And you shouldn't be tolerating anything, anything that isn't of that caliber. But first of all, to even get to attracting that in, you have to learn how to be in a soulmate relationship with your majesty, you. That's where the focus needs to be. You need to shut off all the voices of your parents, of your friends, of society with, oh, well, you know, you're in your late 30s. You shouldn't be so picky, Jenny. You should just get a good guy and be grateful for that. Fuck that rhetoric off. That should not be anywhere near your vortex. It's up to you to guard your vortex with your life and go, sorry, that belief, that comment, not mine. Thank you very much. Return to sender. So really what I want you to really go away with from this conversation is how am I showing up for me in my life? Am I loving what I'm doing with my, with my job? Like who am I really? What am I meant to be doing in this world? Go do that. So many of you in this community are sitting pretty inside of your comfort zone. You're like a little um, gopher. You pop your little head up and you're like, ooh, my dream would be good. And then you pop back down again because you don't have the support system or the sisterhood to actually get you out of what you know and into who you really are. And that's what I help women with 24-7 is saying you've been living a certain way for over 30 years and that's who you think that you are. The truth is many of you in here are living at about 20% of that. You don't know who you really are yet because you're not honouring your bigness. You're not honouring your self-expression. You're not honouring your dreams. You're not actually realising and feeling how fucking magnificent you are. And that's where the leak is of energy. That's where the disconnect is. That's where the gap is. And the only way that you're going to be able to fill that gap is to make yourself a priority and to do whatever it's going to take to get your love tank full again and to learn how to prioritize yourself, how to love yourself. And what loving yourself also looks like is it's not just looking in the mirror and saying affirmations. It's dealing with your past and healing it. It's dealing with your limiting beliefs and up-leveling those. It's dealing with your shitty mindset about love and completely transmuting the negativity into liquid gold and then intentionally creating the future. And in order to create a powerful future, you have to take the time to get clear on what it is that you want. What is that relationship? How do you want to feel? And, and, and so many of you are lazy as fuck in here. And I say that because I care, not because I want to rip you a new one, but because I deeply care and I want every single one, not just in this community, but in the world to realize that change starts with us. Flicking the switch and saying, I'm done with fucking mediocrity. I'm done with my excuses. I'm done with playing small. I'm done with listening to my mother's voice, my father's voice, my friend's voice. I'm going to listen to me. 
why not me this year? Why not? You know what? I'm going to be the one that gets engaged this year. I'm going to be a mother in this lifetime if that's what you want. I'm going to finally go and do that thing that I've been wanting to do all my life and stop making excuses. Do you know how many women will say to me, Lucy, if I could do anything, I would go and, you know, have a florist. I've been saying that for 10 years, but I can't just do that. I mean, I, I studied law. I can't just go and have to open a florist. I'm like, who the fuck says you can't? Oh, well, I just, that wouldn't be accepted in my family or I've already put all this time and energy and investment into being a fucking lawyer. I go, care factor zero. We all die. So without me going off on too much of a tangent, I can guarantee you right now that this is so much bigger than just a conversation about love and relationships and settling when it comes to men. And it's actually more of a conversation about where you're settling with your own self. Forget the guy right now get you right, get into, like, do the work so that you can get into alignment with your soul and to your purpose and your gifts so that you can start fulfilling yourself. Then what's going to happen is you're going to raise your own standards, your own value, your own self-worth is all going to start to rise. And that is the place that you'll be able to attract in your equal that man that's going to stand for you, that's going to support you, that's going to love you, that's going to be inspired by you, and you're going to be inspired by him. Why? Because you took the emphasis off attracting in the guy and then only being complete when you're in a fucking relationship. Um, I'm only going to be significant and of value when I can go to a party like with my, this guy on my arm. No. That's attracting in a man from a place of complete lack and scarcity. Okay? So... This conversation is about you turning your focus back onto you, doing the deep work to be able to believe first and foremost that you're worth it, doing the work on trusting, learning how to trust yourself again, learning how to trust yourself so that you can then actually trust someone else. We're so quick as women to point fingers and go, well, I don't trust men or I don't trust that and, da, 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 and put all of it outside of ourselves, but it's not powerful. The most powerful thing you can do in 2020 is to look at your life and take responsibility and go, every single thing that's in my life right now has come from decisions that I've made up until right now. And you own it. You own your behaviors and you go, fuck, my standards haven't been high enough. The relationship with myself has definitely not been high enough. That was me. Uh, the relationship with my bank account had a massive lid on it. I had lid, lid, lids all around my life. <laughs> and then if I look at the relationship with myself, I was treating myself like a fucking peasant. Hangovers were something I was very used to. That's not self-love. That's called numbing. That's called turning on oneself. And I'm not proud of it. But I know many of you here, if you get really honest, aren't proud of how you treat yourself either. And the only person that can change this and flip it on its head is you. So um, I think that's me. I'm done. If you have any questions, um, definitely post. Holly, um, how are you? Yes, Shelly, Shelly, misery does love company. Um, I don't ever want a settler's life. Yeah, it's such, it's actually a waste of life. You know, um, I have women that come to me that are in relationships, which they obviously have to jump out of like that day because I only work with women that are singles so, because it's about you learning how to come home to yourself and how to actually cultivate and develop and create a sacred soulmate relationship with yourself because energy attracts energy, like attracts like. And so it should really empower you to really hear that, wow, what I'm saying is once you do that work to get yourself into alignment um, and, to, and to turn up your light and, and turn yourself on. You can't not attract in your equal. You can't not attract in your soulmate that's going to just be jumping out of his skin to want to commit to you because he's going to see a woman that's lit up by her own life. And so many people in the world right now are just wanting to get a relationship or just be married because they think that that's going to make them happy and that's going to complete them. And it is the exact opposite. It's like we can only attract in the consciousness of where we're at. So if you haven't dealt with your past or you haven't dealt with your trust issues or you're numbing yourself, you are going to attract exactly that into your life. So don't sit there being confused. Sit there right now being fucking curious and go, holy shit, that is a truth bomb that's really uncomfortable. 
But if you really, really want to change your life, it starts with the decision of this ends right now. Like this mediocrity, this settling energy that you're addicted to ends today. And then it's about putting something in place and taking action and getting the right support so that you can step the fuck up and be the woman that you were born to be in this life. Otherwise, I ask you, what are we here for? To eat shit for breakfast, morning, lunch and dinner and just put up and tolerate relationship because at least we can have sex every now and then or we've got someone to go to the movies with? Like, no. (laughs) I remember watching Revolutionary Road and I was like, I do not want a white picket fence and a marriage and a baby that technically is good where I'm dying on the inside. I was like, that life uh, will be the death of me. However, I was like, I want a fucking expansive marriage. I want to have a baby because I'm doing the work that I love and I can show my baby what's possible. Um, And I was like, you know, I, hello, hummingbird. I love that they always come in and visit. And I was like, you know, I want to completely rewrite the script on what marriage can be because we just hear so much rubbish constantly about, like, people are so fearful of, like, oh, my God, I don't want to get married because I've seen my parents have a divorce or I don't want to get married because all my friends are, like, haven't had sex in seven months and I just don't want that. Whereas it's like, no, you're just not getting the right role model. You're not tuning into the right story. And guess what? At the end of the day, you're the one that gets to write the script of what you want. So get a new notebook, get a fucking great pen, a new pen, and start getting deliberate in being fucking clear about what you want. And then the biggest advice I can give you, it's in my masterclass. If you haven't watched it, go watch it. One of the shifts in there is get a mentor, right? Powerful women do not walk alone. Oprah has not created her empire from doing it on her own. I was going to say on on little Opie's own, little Opie. (laughs) She has a fucking army of people supporting her, right? Her shit comes up too. I have an army of people supporting me. I never walk alone. I wouldn't dream of it. And the minute I decided that, you know what, I'm done with trying to do it my way. I'm done with thinking that I've got this. I don't have this. I am struggling. I am not happy. I am not where I want to be, right? I was at my rock bottom. I was like, this is not what I fucking signed up for in my life. I was like, okay, great. I want the fast track. And that was when I got a mentor and that was when I started really significantly up leveling. And I, as I said, I haven't stopped. So I really invite you to get serious about yourself and about your life and um, to open the door today to what's possible for yourself and know that (sighs) the quickest way to expand is with the collective energy. And I'm helping amazing women in the world right now. I have got way too many examples of women that are in soulmate relationships that have completely changed the trajectory of their life. They've quit their jobs. They've taken risks. They're, you know, they're, they're truly at home with who they are. And that was because they got sick and tired of feeling left behind and that love wasn't possible for them. So I just want to look at my notes because I did write down a few little things. Um, yeah, stop compromising yourself and buying into these really bullshit stories of, oh, I would, but I can't, or that word can't is going to cock block you from everything that you desire, right? Um, yeah, stop settling um, in every area of your life. Start taking some risks. Start um, getting out of your comfort zone. And what's wrong with today to do that? You know, if you're not careful, we're in a new month already. We're at March 2nd. All of a sudden, it'll be June 2nd, and then it'll be September 2nd, and then it'll be December 2nd, and we're going to be hitting 2021. And you'll remember this conversation and go, you know what, that Lucy girl, she swore like a fucking trooper, but holy shit, she was right. Like, life isn't going to just suddenly change, right? Your circumstances aren't just going to, your soulmate is not going to just land in your lap. That's the bottom line. If you're just sitting there hoping, oh, you know, I know that fate is going to bring us together, or divine timing is just going to show up in my life when I least expect it, no. We are all energy. We're all a vibration. And if you're not living at your highest vibration and and living with possibility and living with faith and expecting the best to work out for you and feeling really, really deserving, then I can guarantee you that you're expecting love to fail and you are expecting the bare minimum and that's what you keep attracting. So it starts with you.
Okay, so I'd love to see you know any questions that you have. Hey, gorgeous Jen. Hey, Jazz. Hi, darlings. Um, that's a wrap for me. And um, even when you're watching the replay, I always get back to you know answering your questions. So definitely, definitely hit me up in here. And if you've got a topic that you'd like me to talk about, email Charlotte or tag her in this community, and I'd be more than happy to talk about it. So Holly Jones, I'll share this on my personal page. I want as many women and even men to see and hear this important message and insights. Oh, thank you, Holly. That's awesome. Go, sister. Malika, thanks for your insight. My absolute pleasure. So I hope that lands on your heart and you can really, really absorb this message because um, everything is possible for you. You are totally, totally um, deserving of a soulmate relationship. Uh, but many of you are feeling that cerebrally and, and where the work is, is to feel that deservability in your heart and in yourselves. And when you do read my lips, this man will float into your life you will be going down the stream, right, through on that beautiful, like, non-resistant um, wave and you're just going to be like, oh, my God, it's not hard because it's not. But it takes commitment to really shift out of our old identity and it takes us wanting to commit to our dream uh, instead of committing to our fear. That's the biggest thing I can share with you. So fuck settling in any area of your life. If you want support with this, please don't be a stranger, but only reach out to my team if you're really, really ready to, to put yourself first, okay? Because it, 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 we, really, we go really, really deep in Soul to Soul. Um, it's not for the faint-hearted. It's not for you if you're just like wanting to dabble or like you're just sort of like curious. No, 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 no. This, this is not the time for you to do it. It is for you though. I can help you if you're at a place where you're like, I will do whatever it takes. I am fucking sick of settling. I'm sick of feeling left behind. I'm sick of not attracting in the good guys. I want more for myself and you're ready to do whatever it's going to take. Then sister, I cannot wait to meet you and chat with you. Mwah. I'm sending you all my love. And please remember it is, your, it is your birthright to be loved and supported and to be in a soulmate relationship. And the only person that's blocking you from that is you and your belief system. Okay. It's all here for you. All right. Love you girls. Bye.